Hey guys, um, it's Miss Gephardt, and we are going to take it through the Earth's past is revealed in rocks and fossils notes. So go ahead and uh, make sure in your notebook you've titled the top of the notebook with this so that you know what these notes are going to be about. When you're finished, um, the overall objective would be for you to be able to explain the different kinds of fossils and how they show traces of life, and then be able to explain how fossils formed, how the different types of fossils were formed, and the conditions that are necessary for fossil formation. So the first thing we want to start with, if we're talking about fossils, is we want to talk about the dinosaurs, because that's probably what everybody can relate to with the dinosaurs. So what happened to the dinosaurs? Well, we know about 65 million years ago, they become extinct. And it's believed that their extinction was due to um, an asteroid, uh, or a meteor shower, asteroid shower sort of thing, hitting the planet. And as you can see here in this picture, it left very large craters. So you can imagine um, if you went out to a field and it was maybe um, the softball field or whatever and it's very, very dry, um, red clay, um, and you threw a baseball down or a softball down on the ground, you would expect a poof of, of red clay to come up. Um, well, imagine that except on a tremendous scale. So when this, when this meteor sort of hit and these kind of this impact, these asteroids sort of impacted, um, it sent a big poof into the air. Well, it covered up the sun and it dropped the global temperature. So that's believed to be um, how the dinosaurs went extinct is that they needed the sun for warmth. The sun went away because, or it was blocked. The global temperatures dropped, plants would die off. Dinosaurs can't regulate their temperature. They would die off, okay? So when we talk about um, the um, dinosaurs, we know that they are now um, extinct, all right, and so they're a fossil. And so we want to now start defining what a fossil is. So a fossil is going to be any um, trace or remain of something that was once living, okay, from long ago. But it has to be a remain or a trace of that remain. And that fossil gives us a story. It tells us what this animal's life was like. Okay, so some examples of fossils, these are all different kinds. I mean, obviously we have shells over here. Um, these we'll get into, but these are, um, this is a carbon film. So it's the carbon that's been left over and sort of imprinted on the rock. Obviously shark's teeth would fall into it. The bones themselves are examples of fossils. Um, even um, a, a den or a home that an organism lived in could still be under classified as that fossil because it is gonna give us information about that organism's life. All right, so how do fossils form? All right, so what's gonna happen? And we're gonna see fossil formation in sedimentary rock. Okay, that's something we want to make sure we understand. Not really going to find it in igneous, we're not going to find it in metamorphic. It gets way too hot, so the, the fossils would likely be destroyed. The animal, the carcass, would be destroyed. So we have an animal, and it dies, okay? And so animal, you know, this, this little fishy here died, and it, it, you know, its body fell to the, to the bottom, okay? And over time, as the water is rushing past... Or it could just be as earth is passing and, and um, sediments being blown or whatever. Um, it's going to be sort of layered on top of this and sort of compacted in there. And so that's what we see right here. So the organism becomes buried under sediment. This isn't a water example, but it could be out in the middle of the desert too, um, as long as the conditions were right and it didn't, the organism didn't get eaten up by scavengers. Um, so organism's dead. Layers upon layers of new rock form on top of it, and then the actual um, skin and such will decay away, but the bones will be left, and there we go. That we've preserved these remains, and that's how a fossil is going to be formed. Now, there are we're going to go over kind of six examples, really five examples of different types of fossils, and the six is going to be a specific um, a specific fossil um, type, um, but it's not really, I guess it's confusing, but it's not a type of fossil, it's just a, um, a classification of fossil, I should say. Um, the first type we're going to talk about is a mold and a cast, and I want you to think of molds and casts like a cake pan. So here's my cake pan, all right, bloop, here's my cake pan, okay, and then a cake, okay. So a mold and a cast, what happens is the organism dies, like we just saw previously, and it makes an impression in the um, sediment. Well, over time, the organism itself completely decays away, but the impression is left, all right? And then sediment rushes in, fills in that impression and hardens, and then we 
get this sort of, it's not the organism itself, but it's an impression of that organism. So the mold is the cake pan. It's the, it's the impression that's left. Once the um, sediment fills in and it hardens and it comes out, we form a cast. Okay. Think about if you were to put your hand in wet cement, you put your hand in it, you leave your handprint, you take it out, it would harden. We could put stuff in there and make an impression of your hand, but it's not your hand itself. So the mold is the handprint. The cast would be if we filled it in with sediment and hardened and it came out. Same as a cake um, in a cake pan. Okay, so the cake pan is the mold. The cake itself would be the cast. Um, another um, classification of original remains, and these are the actual bodies. This is the actual organism. All right, so this being the T-Rex, um, the actual bones and teeth of the T-Rex. Um, if it's any flesh to it, if it's um, the whole organism itself, but it has to be the actual body parts. Another, um, and we think about original reins, there are three ways that we can preserve these soft parts, and this is soft parts, okay? The best way to preserve is ice, and ice is going to preserve all the bones, the muscle, the skin, even the hair. So we can see this woolly mammoth baby right here. It died and it happens, you know, it's an unfortunate thing. But this is preserved hair, teeth, even the tummy contents in here, what its last meal was, it's still intact. And think of how much information that's gonna provide. A second way to preserve these original remains is amber, um, and it's a, a resin. I want you to kind of think of it like a very thick syrup, and it hardens, and it hardens like a rock. And unfortunately, these little critters and these little organisms in here may have just been chilling out on a tree, talking to their best friend or whatever, and they got stuck with some resin, and it, especially if it was a winged animal, if it gets on their wings, they couldn't flap their wings, they were stuck, and now they were completely covered over, and it hardened, and so they're completely preserved. The third way is tar, and um, tar is very thick, it's very oily, um, and these are tar pits right in here, these are the La Brea tar pits in California, and what you can see are organisms that have been actually taken out of it, uh, of the tar pits when they have excavated them. And you're going to find saber-toothed tigers and woolly mammoths. Um, but the same idea is it's going to preserve a lot of the, the features. Not as good as ice would, but it's still going to preserve, um, you know, some of the um, features of the organism. All right, another type of fossil is um, petrified wood. So think of this as a stone fossil of a tree. It's actually a tree, but it feels and it's going to look like stone. Um, so here's some petrified, like what the, the, the crystals look like. This is the wood itself. Um, what happens basically is that this tree was in a, a situation where um, it becomes covered in sediment. Water goes through it um, and the sediment into the tree cells, the minerals in the water will take the place of the cells themselves. So the cells are sort of forced out and the minerals are put in their place, thus making it really, really hard. Um, carbon films, um, if we have any dead plants or animals that have decayed, it leaves its carbon behind and everything on earth has carbon. And so what it does is it's actually, if you would look at the, the rock itself, it looks like somebody painted on this um, leaf. But really what it is is that the leaf got sort of smushed and the, the soft parts of the leaf, you know, decayed away, but it left its imprint on the rock itself. And you can see these are examples and over here as well. You're not going to really probably feel much. It might be slightly raised, but not a lot. But it will give you all the detail of the leaf or flower or whatever. Um, another type are called um, trace fossils. And if you can see, this is a footprint of an organism. Okay, so a trace fossil is going to be something that shows us where this organism has been. Footprints, here's footprints here. Okay, um, animal holes, like the, where they've lived. Um, a trail, so like if there was a trail to a water hole or a trail to some kind of food. Um, or we could see lots of animals passing by. These are all trace fossils. It's not the actual organism itself, but it is information about what that organism's life was like. Index fossils. Now, this is a specific classification of fossil. It's not a type of fossil, it's just like a classification. An index fossil is a fossil, and these are two examples of it. This is a brachiopod, and this is a trilobite. And what they are, are they're very common fossils, or very common organisms. They're distributed all over the place, but the key is, is they're only around for a small period of time. So when we have dated them, and we'll talk about dating 
later on. But when we found out how old they were, we can use that information and we know that any other fossils that we stumble across, if they're in the same layer as that um, trilobite, this guy right here, we know how old the, the organism is because it's found in the same spot. So an index fossil is just a way to um, sort of know how old other surrounding fossils that we maybe don't know how old they are, actually find out how old they are. Okay, so now there are some other evidence that we can use when we are um, looking at uh, information and one of them is called tree rings and you all probably have heard of tree rings. There are all these rings that are in the tree. Well, a tree ring is going to provide us with the amount of moisture that this tree received. So if they've got a very thick ring, thick ring means we had a lot of rain, okay? Thin rings mean that there was a very a poor, a, a small amount of rain. It's a poor amount of rain. So that can tell us climate conditions. So we know if we went through droughts or if we went through monsoons and excessive amounts of rainfall. And this also can tell us the age of the tree. So we also know how long ago that this drought or this monsoon may have occurred. An ice core, another way of getting information about um, what happened on the planet. So we can piece together like a tree ring and an ice core with maybe possibly an um, animal extinction. An ice core is literally a core of ice that they have taken out and it um, tells us um, what's going on. It, it traps air, it traps gases, it traps dust and ash. And that can tell us if I found in this ice core maybe 10,000 years ago an excessive amount of ash I could probably assume that there may have been a large volcanic eruption. And if I found a whole lot of fossils that had um, that a lot of animals went extinct in that same time period, I might be able to assume, I might, I might make an assumption that these organisms died because of this massive volcanic eruption. So the, the ice core um, is it, a timeline and it, and it provides information like uh, gases and the different, it has the oxygen levels changed, so the nitrogen levels changed. We can get that from the ice core. Um, what you see here, this is a, uh, if, if they shaved the core, okay, so we imagine this is an ice core and I shaved it this way, very thin. All these are dots, okay, these are all dots in here. And what they did is after they analyzed it, they learned that the atmosphere was different. They looked inside of all these trapped bubbles and found that, that there was differences in the gases. Okay, that's what they're looking for when they're analyzing the ice core. On this final thing, it's just an interesting thing, but drilling, um, and you can see right down here, 3,260 meters or 10,695 feet, scientists have brought up an ice core that pushes the climate record back 60,000 years to 800,000 years. I mean, that's a tremendous amount of time. Just by looking at a piece of ice, they can look and understand the climate of the region. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down in your notebook and you take it to your teacher. Do not forget to take the quiz on the fossils. Um, make sure you do that right after this video. If you don't understand, rewind, watch again, take more notes, um, do whatever you need to do. And if you have questions, don't forget, ask your teacher.